Welcome to Locally Sourced. I'm Armanda Famoletti. Glenwood Center is right here in Putnam County, so let's find out more about this wonderful treasure. Welcome my guests, Kathleen Finley and Megan Lummer, like farmer. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, Thanks. Kathleen, tell me about Glenwood. I, it's sure. surprising a lot of people I talk to don't know about Glenwood, and it's such a fantastic place. So yeah. tell me about it and, and what you do there. Sure. So Glenwood Center for Regional Food and Farming, we are a nonprofit based near Cold Spring. And essentially what our work is trying to do is ensure that the Hudson Valley is defined as a food region so that farming can thrive. So a lot of the work that we do is about building that local food ecosystem within the Hudson Valley. Mm -hmm. um, and we do that in a few different ways. We train farmers, so we run and operate a pasture-based livestock operation and an organic vegetable operation. And we use that farm to train uh, new entry farmers, so farming people who are farming in the beginning of their farming career. Um, and then we also promote local food in a variety of ways. We'll talk about some of those programs a little later on in the show, but uh, really helping people understand what food is produced in the Hudson mm -hmm. Valley and how they can support it. And then we have a number of offerings where we invite folks to come on to the property and experience um, what's kind of a typical small-scale, mid-sized farm. Okay, so we have some photographs that we'll show of um, the beautiful Glenwood Farm. And so tell me, how big is it? How many people work there? Um, how many people volunteer there? What kind of animals you have? You have sure. animals. Yeah, there. yeah. So the property is about 250 acres. Um, we, is that large for That's a small farm area? I mean, it's a typical Hudson Valley size farm. So okay. farms in the Hudson Valley can range from an acre actually really um, up to 1500 or 2000 acres so there's a lot of variety um, 250 is kind of not atypical mm -hmm. um, the type of regenerative farming that we promote is often this kind of small scale very diverse farming mm -hmm. can you talk about what regenerative farming is Cause yeah Sure. So that's a term that a lot of us are using now. Sustainable farming is another term that talks about a type of farming where the values of the ecosystem, the health, welfare of the animals, the health of the soil is optimized. So you want to farm mm -hmm. in a way that is um, taking the least amount away from the land. So regenerative is actually um, and the idea is that you want to give back to the land that you're harvesting. Mm -hmm. So all of your techniques, how you build nutrients in the soil, you know, discourage the use of pesticides or um, inputs like fertilizer, really mm -hmm. working with nature um, to maintain the quality of that soil and mm -hmm. land mm -hmm. so that you, we can continue to harvest healthy food from Right, it. right. So um, how I understand it is, or what I've seen like a, when I went to on a tour to Stone Barns or something, is that, um, you know, you have animals there and you grow crops and you kind of use what comes from the animals to regenerate the soil. It's, a, it's sort of a very cyclical kind of thing. You, uh, you do you move like the animals pasture their grazing land around and then come in and do so you're kind of using every piece of, of the acreage and you're constantly regenerating the right. soil you're not depleting it you're using to regenerate it and you mentioned organic so is everything you grow uh, organic and anything that people want to purchase from you is organic our vegetables are all um, certified organic, which is a, a federal certification that you have to mm -hmm. kind of keep careful logs and um, prove that you're practicing these methodologies. Mm -hmm. You can certainly use those practices and not go through the certification process. So it's one thing um, that it would be great for your viewers to understand is that even if something isn't certified organic, they could be using the exact same practices as a farm that is certified mm -hmm. organic. Mm -hmm. So what's the important question is if, if those um, if those principles are important to you is to talk with your farmer and find out what what practices are they using, what certifications they have, but to know that just because they're not certified doesn't mean that they're not 
the best practices out there. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good to know. Because yeah. when I do get a farmer's markets and I ask, is this organic? If they say no, I tend to walk to the next booth. So, but it, they may, they should go on and yeah. say, but we use. So one of the reasons practices. why we've chosen to, to be certified organic is because we are a teaching farm, like I said. We want our apprentices who live and work on the farm for almost a year to understand what it takes to get a certification. And then when they start their own farm, they can make that decision in a really informed mm -hmm. way. Because it does take more labor and time and documentation. Um, is it worth it to certify it so you don't lose that customer mm -hmm. like you mm -hmm. that's gonna be discerning? Um, or can I build my customer base in a way that's they understand that I'm doing I'm doing the best uh -huh. practices without having to go through the certification process? Okay, that's good to know. And you all you sell vegetables, meat. So tell me about the meat that you sell. I mean, is there such a thing as organic meat or? So all of our um, animals are raised with a certification called Animal Welfare Approved. And that um, is really about how we treat the animals. And that's another important thing to ask yeah. your local farmers. So there's a couple of different things. The, the feed that we give our animals is organic, so there's no inputs there in their feed. They're pasture-based, mm -hmm. so that okay. means they... Can you say they're grass-fed? They or? are grass-fed. Okay. Grass-fed is... Um, is a is a beef certification so they're out on pasture all the time which is a really important question to ask your local farmer um, and then they're raised with the highest standard of care for the animal and that's certified mm -hmm. um, again the certification is one is one level but it's really about a dialogue with your farm or, mm -hmm. or a number of farms are asking the right questions to find out what practices they use right. so we raise um, we raise lambs we raise goat um, we raise chickens for eggs, and we raise cows. I see. Cows before? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Wow, so how many animals do you have? That sounds like um, it cows, they take up a lot of room. Yeah, yeah. so we, we have, um, like I said, we have 250 acres. There's probably about 100 acres in pasture. So we rotate the animals around so that they're spreading their manure throughout our fields, and that helps fertilize the mm -hmm. soil, keep those grasses rich and healthy. Um, uh, we have about, it depends, we, we breed our animals, so it depends when uh, in the season how many animals there mm -hmm. are. Um, right now we have a lot of lamb hanging around, so um, but there are about 40 to 50 on each herd, and then when they have babies, that, well, they that double sounds like a lot to me. Yeah, <laughs> on 250 acres, yeah. a lot going on over there. Um, so, Glenwood isn't just about um, local. I mean, this is locally sourced, but it isn't just about Putnam County. It's about all of Hudson Valley. And Megan, you are the director for the regional programs. So, tell me about that. What what regional programs do you have, and um, what is your role as director? Sure. So the regional food programs at Glenwood work to um, bring together different stakeholders from throughout the food and farming system uh, up and down the Hudson Valley to, again, achieve this aim of um, ensuring that we have a food culture and a food practice that is really closely tied to these regenerative agricultural practices, right? Um, and in a lot of instances, you may find that that farmers or chefs or the people who are growing our seeds are not necessarily in dialogue with each other. So the types of uh, collaborations and teachings and coalitions that we form as part of the regional food program really have that, that idea at their heart, right? To mm -hmm. um, work with the people who actually make our food system to identify what the problems are that they need addressing and then design programs around that mm -hmm. to meet those needs. So a few that, uh, that we've been working on for several years now. One is our cider project, and that works with apple growers and hard cider makers to um, increase their technical skill and also to uh, increase the consumer's awareness about mm -hmm. hard cider as a regional New York and particularly a Hudson Valley product. Oh, this product. is hard cider, I see. That's right, yeah, that's right. So lots of- Fun cider. The fun cider, yeah. <laughs> the, the, you know. Sweet cider is also fun. They're both fun. <laughs> no, um, no, I'm, not, I'm not casting any aspersions <laughs> on any kind of cider. But yeah, we've had a huge growth in the cider industry uh, in New York State 
from 10 years ago, we had about 10 cideries in the state, and now we have, I think it's over 80 across the state. So it's really a growing economy and a great one for the apple growers who are such mm -hmm. an important part of um, the agricultural history in the Hudson Valley sure. in particular, right? So through that work, we have founded uh, Cider Week New York City and Cider Week Hudson Valley, which is coming up in June. Wow. So This Glenwood should... did that. Yep, that's right, yeah. And uh, launched the New York Cider Association, which now runs both of those those festivals in addition to two others in the state. That is fantastic. Yeah, it's a great project, yeah. And then we also um, coordinate the Hudson Valley CSA Coalition, which is a group of community-supported agriculture farmers. Mm -hmm. um, and that is working to increase awareness about CSA as a way to get your food from your local farms. Right, right. We have yeah. actually a little video That's right. um, that you brought with you about explaining what, a, what CSA is, and it's one of someone who works at Glenwood, I think, who is mm -hmm. uh, speaking for you. It's really short, and I'll get a cue in a minute to tell me sure. when it's um, ready to go. So I didn't mean to interrupt you, but not everyone knows what a CSA is. It sounds like C. That's mm -hmm. right. I A. Oh. So that Here sounds like uh, we're seeing <laughs> such a big problem in this country of division between urban and rural communities and the deterioration of rural communities. And I think, you know, farms are be such a great way to combat that and bring back rural communities. Most farms spend most of the money they earn like right in the community. And then you're also producing food for the community that's really high quality. <laughs> it, it is short, yeah. <laughs> so that was Jarrett Nelson, who's our vegetable manager, um, who not only oversees the vegetable operation at Glenwood, but also um, mentors all of our apprentice farmers who are learning vegetable farming and is a really integral part of this CSA coalition wow. as well. Wow, so yeah. it, uh, it was very brief. Tell me what CSA stands for. Yeah, so CSA stands for Community Supported Agriculture. Uh, it's a model that has only really been taking root in, this, in the United States since maybe the late 60s, early 70s. And the idea behind it is that um, the community that the farm is in and the farmer are in a relationship of trust with each other to produce that food, right? What that means is that you or I, as someone who wants to enjoy this beautiful fresh produce, would invest in that farm at the beginning of the season. So we would buy a share of the farm's harvest um, sometime in the spring, lots of our local CSAs are still looking for more members right now. Mm -hmm. And then over the course of the growing season, uh, every week or every other week, you would pick up your share of that harvest of what that farmer's been able to grow. I go to the farm that I've invested in as a CSA member, right. and they give me vegetables. And do I pay for these vegetables, or I've already paid up front? You've, in most cases, typically. you've already paid. Yeah, the, the model can be really different depending on which farm it is. But Glenwood CSA, you would come to the farm to pick it up, and you've, you've already paid. So you've invested in your, oh. your grocery so shop. So it's like your farm, right? So, yeah. And so you're benefiting and also sharing some of the risk with the farmer. So if it's a really great and robust mm -hmm. season, your share every week is fabulous. If there's a big storm, that week might not be as great, and but you're sort of in it with the farmer, and the idea is that there's a real strong relationship between mm -hmm. um, those who are growing our food and the community that they're feeding. Okay, so it's sort of like farm to car to table, because <laughs> I'm going over there and I'm picking it up myself. So you, Glenwood started a coalition of CSAs. This is sort of under your umbrella of regional programs. Tell me, what's the region? Is it all of Hudson Valley? Is it specific counties in Hudson Valley? That's a great question. So we, we originally identified the region as 10 counties in the Hudson Valley, basically from Albany down to about Westchester. We have a few uh, farms that are you know, part of our community that maybe aren't quite in one of those counties who have asked to be included in the coalition. So they're not quite in. They're just you know <laughs> that we're, we're we, we look at it as a community of farms as okay. well. But all right. uh, basically, all of the counties that touch the river from from Albany south to to Westchester. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the reasons for that geographic need was that many of the CSA farms were actually dropping off their shares in the city because that was where they found they had a good market for people sure. who wanted to, mm -hmm. to invest in the farm and really um, had a strong desire to be feeding the people that they were living with, to be really feeding their mm -hmm. own community. So that's one of the, the goals of the coalition is to increase 
membership right here in the Hudson Valley. And how many CSAs are in the coalition right now? I assume it's growing all the time. It is growing all the time, yeah. So we, we um, when we formalized the coalition three years ago, there were about 60 farms, and now we have right around 85. But it does. So it does it's not, it hasn't been running that over. long. I'm, I'm kind of surprised you have 85 farms. Yeah. So, um, so I live, don't live too far from Glenwood if I wanted to be a member of the CSA. Tell me a little bit what I would have to do about that. And then tell me about if I didn't live in Putnam and I lived, you know, in Sullivan or something, what I'd what I do. I'm not going to come to your CSA. I'm going to go to a farmer who lives closer to me. Mm -hmm. right? Sure. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. any, anywhere, anywhere you live, you could use our, the coalition's website, which is uh, HudsonValleyCSA.org. And on that website... Oh, hold on for, so yeah. it's different from Glenwood.org. Can I go to Glenwood.org to, to get to that site as well? You can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you definitely can, yeah. Um, or you can just Google Hudson Valley CSA, and we should be the first thing that pops uh -huh. up when you do that. Um, and the database of farms is searchable by your zip code. So you just type in your zip code, You'll get a list of all the farms that have drop-off locations or if the farm is near enough to you for you to go there yourself. Um, and it's not just vegetables you can get from a CSA share also. You can get uh, meat, dairy, flowers, even herbal bread. remedies, bread. bread. Yeah, there's there's a lot of different options for uh, supporting local farms. Okay, yeah. and it, I just get my options once I put in my zip code and it'll tell me everything I need to do. That's so right, how yeah. much does it cost? How, either is there a, a sliding scale or something? What if I don't want a ton of vegetables <clears throat> every week? What if I just want a few? Yeah, I mean, the amazing thing about the CSA model is that um, really what Kathleen was saying, like it's at the heart of it is this relationship between you and the farm and how that is interpreted by farms into a business model can actually have a lot of variation within it. So um, while some farms will have you pay everything right up front, like Glenwood CSA, like other CSAs, uh, others will have staggered payment options, some will have sliding scale options, so depending on your income, um, you can choose to pay a little bit less, or you can use your mm -hmm. SNAP and EBT benefits to to purchase a CSA. Oh, really? That's great. Um, or you can, you know, if you if you happen to have a little more than you need, you can you can help to support those shares for other people in your community. So a huge variation, but on on average, a weekly vegetable CSA will cost you between about twenty and thirty five dollars a week. Now you can choose. You get it once a week, once every other week, once a month, and that will all be um, mm -hmm. options laid out by the farm. And and yeah. so what you're getting are vegetables that are are ripe then, right? right? There's no trucking in from California. Uh, they're, they're not treated to make them riper and when they re finally reach your supermarket. They are what is right off the vine at the moment, right? right. Now, yeah. as a CSA member, do I have to go and pick anything or plant anything? I, I kind of thought that there was some sweat equity in this. There's not? Some CSAs do have um, like work p components to their offerings, but not all of them. So it's not, again, what Megan was saying, there's just a ton of variety. So I think um, if someone was interested in becoming a member of a CSA, it'd be first to find out what farms are near them mm -hmm, using mm -hmm. this tool on our website, and then think about what model suits them the best. If they want to um, work as part of their investment, that might be offered by some mm -hmm. of their farms or not. And if they want vegetables or meat or Mm -hmm. Other things, yeah. And I think it's worth worth saying also a lot of CSA farmers are really receptive. So if you want to work for part of your investment in the farm and they aren't offering that on their website or their Facebook page, just send them a message and see. Like they're yeah. you know, they're there to build that relationship with you. Yeah. Okay. So is there a window of opportunity to get into a CSA? I mean, can is there a cutoff date when you say sorry, this because of planning and planting and this and the other thing, we're not accepting any more members? Yeah. There is. Yeah. Now's, now's the time. time. Now's, now's, now's the time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. No wonder you wanted to do the show now. Okay. <laughs> so tell yeah. me exactly what's the cutoff date. So, sorry, most vegetable CSAs will have their first share at the end of this month or the first week of June. So this week and next are great if you're looking for a full season vegetable share. More and more, there are farms who are also offering um, like shortened shares later in the season. So if they they're realizing that they're having a really particularly great season. They might open up a couple shares just for the end of the fall, but 
really, this this is the moment. By by the end of May is when you want to. They're cut off. Yeah. And, and but and in terms of Glenwood, you have a store there. You have a farm store that's open a few days a week. So tell me about that. Um, I don't have to belong to a CSA to come and buy whatever has just been harvested off the farm, right, at your farm store. Yeah, right. In the winter, the farm store is open on Thursday afternoons. Um, what do you sell in the winter? Cakes? We sell, we actually um, create, we store crops, so a lot of uh, root, root vegetables. vegetables, and we have some greenhouses, so we'll have some greens available okay. for sale. Oh. Um, and then we have meat all year round, obviously, and eggs. And then we also sell products from other Hudson Valley farms. So it's not just our farm. So we might have fruit from Fishkill or, um, you know, cheeses from some of our local dairy mm -hmm. houses. Um, so starting in uh, that first week of June, our farm store will be open Tuesday and Thursday afternoons and Saturday morning. Um, and that coincides with CSA pickup for the folks that are coming. They oh, okay. can get their CSA share and then they can get some cheese or some meat oh. to go along with their share. But anyone can come to the store and there will be a range of vegetables as well as Okay, say um, those, those days again in uh, starting June yeah. 1st. Yeah, Tuesday and Thursday afternoons and Saturday morning. Okay. And you can go on our website and it will have what we plan to be in the store because it changes all the time and we don't always know because mm -hmm. things might sprout later yeah. or... Um, things like that. So that's kind of the joy of the, farming, isn't yeah. it? There's always that unknown kind of yeah, and mother nature. And actually that's an important part of um, why CSA is, you know, it's about the relationship with the farmer and what that brings to the customer in addition to supporting the farm that's in your community. You get a really diverse range of vegetables if it's a vegetable CSA. Um, which studies show is as a much healthier than eating the right. same vegetables year in, you know, day in right, and day right, out throughout right. the year. So you have a, a lot, much larger range of nutrients. So it's healthy mm -hmm. for you. It tastes better because it's been picked really mm -hmm. right then. So, so let me interrupt you yeah. because Glenwood Farm is a nonprofit, and you are doing so much valuable work for our community and the entire region. Tell me, where do you get your support? And how can people like me support you other than, you know, coming to the CSA? You have some days open to the public, right? Now, yeah. So people get, you know, yeah. sort of so interested. Yeah, so we, um, again, on our website, lists all of our public events. You have we a have nice little calendar. Farm dinners every month where we um, have a really communal uh, dinner that features, of course, gorgeous food from the Hudson Valley. We usually have, we always have a visiting chef, usually from the valley, sometimes from the city. Wow. Um, they pay people, as you uh, wish. How many people can go to a farm we dinner? We do different um, numbers, but between uh, 40 and 60, basically, throughout okay. the year. All right. Um, I'm sure it then, fills up fast. Mm. Yeah, they do fill up fast. Um, and in the summer, they're often outside. It's really pleasant on the farm. Mm -hmm. And it's also a way to get to know your neighbors who are also interested in delicious mm -hmm. food and supporting their farmers. Uh, we also have an open day called Food and Farm Day, so that's also on our website. And that's like a family-oriented day, but you can do some hands-on skill learning. Mm -hmm. We do workshops for the public throughout the year, learning how to, how to cook or how to... Um, pick the best chicken for what you want to do. Did I see like a, a weeding workshop? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm going to sign backyard, up for that. Gardening skills is really popular. I'm definitely losing the battle of the weed. <laughs> so if you can teach yeah. me something like that. So if and then we have a big gala once a year where okay. that's really where we raise funds for all of our programs. Um, that's also a big, beautiful farm dinner, essentially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's some dancing involved. Okay. Um, we're running out of time, sure. so uh, I volunteer for Second Chance Foods, and Martha right. Elder said, sure. be sure I mention Second Chance Foods because it's sort of part of this whole idea of um, saving uh, food, perfectly good food from going into the waste stream and getting it onto people's tables. And so, and, and you have lots of partners. You partner with Second Chance Foods. Who else do you partner with? I mean, we work with land trusts and other food and farming organizations throughout the Hudson Valley because we're regional. Um, you know, we're really collaborative with those other organizations who 
uh, we all have the shared agenda of bringing a healthy, robust local food system mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. So, and it sounds like you folks are kind of in the center of it and helping people to connect and um, get to know each other, not just the farmers, but the whole community. So I really appreciate what you're doing. And Thank I you. hope with this show and other ways, more people learn about Glenwood and you just continue to uh, glow and be such a wonderful treasure for Putnam County and the rest of Hudson Valley. Thanks so uh, much. And if people want to donate, if they, you know, if they say, I got to support this, this sounds great, you've a donate button on your web page, mm -hmm. right? You yep. have the gala. Yep. You have, no, you don't charge for these public days where, where people can come on the Food farm. Food and farm day or the farm store, you're just welcome to come and experience it, absolutely. Okay. And do you need volunteers? We have a couple really great volunteer days on our farm. So when our farmers um, say they need a few extra hands, those are also on our website. Um, we encourage you to get into the get in the dirt and out on the fields and help us really feed our community. Yeah, it sounds like a blast. Yeah. Um, so I'm definitely coming for the weeding. And, um, great, great. and maybe a few other things Our as farmers, well. thank you. Yes. Because, well, if you, if, wait a minute, am I going to actually be weeding? Yes. Oh, oh what? Because I thought I was just going to learn how to do it easily. Hands-on oh, learning. I'll have to by the stress hands-on learning. Yeah. By the expert weeders that, yeah. uh, that are there. Uh, thanks so much for coming. We're thanks. just going to uh, yeah, wind up. Us. And you guys were great to work with. And thank to, thanks to your friend Clayton because he was, my the backup, best. and he's the best, and yeah. thank you. So I'm going to shake thanks. your hand. Thanks. Thank you very thanks much, so much, Kathleen. Thank you so much. And yeah, Megan. And I just want to thank the uh, crew who volunteers and all the people who watch. Thanks. Great. Thanks. thanks.